Hi guys, today I'm going to do a review of a book that I finished as my class read last week and that is Varjak Poor by SF Said. This is a really really good book and a book that's had a massive impact on the enthusiasm and attitude towards reading for my class. We were actually sent the book by SF Said, we were sent a signed copy um, which in itself was extremely exciting and since then have um, have taken the advice from Ashley Booth on Twitter to interact with the author, to ask questions, to promote that sort of direct dialogue between the class and the author of the book itself. In doing that, the enthusiasm for the book, the attitude towards reading and literature has been quite frankly astonishing and I'd say it is perhaps a turning point for many, many children in my class. Now, I'll just pop it down for the second and run through the story. The book centres on a cat named Varjak Poor. The cat lives in a really posh house on the top of a hill, known as the Contessa's house. Now, this cat, and this is a bit of a mouthful, but this cat is a Mesopotamian blue cat. This is a very rare breed of cat and quite frankly a sort of stuck-up breed of cat who see themselves as um, superior to other breeds and and really stay indoors. Varjak Poor, Varjak Poor is different to the rest of his family though. He um, He's adventurous, he feels the burning urge and desire to sort of reach the outside world, to, to get outside the four walls of the house they live in and whilst he's living a very good life and a very well catered life, he wants to experience more and he wants to um, he wants to get outside. He follows the um, he follows the sort of tales of um, his ancestor uh, Jalalpur who as the story goes was um, was a very famous explorer cat who essentially overcame various challenges to, to bring the family from Mesopotamia to where they are now. And Varjak's curiosity um, to explore and to leave the house comes to fruition when a situation arises that means, in fact, he does have to leave his house to try and find help. His family are put into a situation that he sees as perilous or dangerous when a gentleman arrives at their house with two black cats, two um, large intimidating looking cats and Varjak sees the only way to um, to set things right and to save his family as going and finding help, help in the form of a dog. Now Varjak doesn't know what a dog is and Varjak finds himself in the middle of a road trying to stop um, what he perceives to be a dog, a large scary beast that makes a lot of noise and um, has very bright eyes which is in fact a car. Now Varjak goes on various adventures, uh, he meets other cats, he comes across um, sort of gangs of cats, he he makes friends on his journey and essentially it's a sort of story of self-discovery, self-development um, self with an ongoing theme of um, of learning skills and um, sort of traits from his um, his ancestor Jalalpur through um, through dreams he's having. The book's written in a really nice way, where the certain chapters are dedicated towards Varjak's dreams, where he where he is in Mesopotamia, where he is interacting with Jalalpur and learning the way, which is. Um, which is the sort of seven skills that that he needs to do, to develop and um, ascertain from his um, his ancestor, and chapters are dedicated to that. And as you sort of read the book, you'll notice that because they're in a slightly different colour the pages. But as I say, it's an adventure story. It's a story about self discovery, and it's a story where I think certain real messages can be taken. Varjak's different from his family. He looks different. He has different coloured eyes. He has different ambitions. And I think there's some really important messages that can be taken for children there in that you don't have to all look the same. You don't have to um, you don't have to all achieve the same thing. Your ambitions can be different from others and that doesn't make them wrong. And there doesn't have to be a ceiling on what you're capable of just because you're perhaps predefined by the environment around you. 
And I think from that perspective, we've had some really brilliant conversations in class. We've had, um, we've had lessons where it sort of leads into PSHE. We've had lessons where we've based our guided reading activities around this book and focused heavily on character emotion. We've, um, we're actually doing something similar to what I'm doing now, where the children in my class yesterday um, prepared in pairs the content for a video book review of the book and that's something we're going to be recording on Monday so I'd say it's a really brilliant book I'd say it's a book that I've done in year four I think it's perfectly useful in year four I think it were is one in year four that maybe is better done as a sort of class read as opposed in terms of accessing the text and I'd say higher up key stage two children would certainly be able to read that independently the more able readers I think it's a brilliant book I think it's um it's one that's really exciting in that there is a sequel, The Outlaw Varjak Poor. And what I'd say is, SF said the author has been so, so welcoming, so helpful, and just fantastic in helping ignite that love for reading amongst my class. So Varjak Poor, really, really enjoyed it. Would recommend it to anyone. Give it a read. You won't be disappointed. Thank you for watching, guys. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, Really pleased for the support I'm getting, really flattered by all the positive feedback. And yeah, if you could subscribe to the um, the channel, that would be all the better. So thank you very much, and I hope you've enjoyed the video review of Varjak Poor by SF Said. Thank you.